this is Cedia, and in this video we're going to be doing $5 vegan eats all over New York City. Now this next stop is on the Upper East Side because we were trying to be fancy just like Gossip Girl but it didn't really work out. On the inside is super cute. When they open up indoor dining it is such a great place to get work done and in the back there's these curtains and I know something there is behind it and I just want to know what it was. But I just minded my own business, I didn't say anything, I asked the worker if they had any vegan options, he said no we do not. And then I looked to the left and I saw two items that under the title said vegan, but you know like that's none of my business either. Because he was actually really nice and we love him, okay? And this beautiful chocolate loaf is what we actually ended up getting, it was so pretty. Got here to this beautiful coffee shop. It is the cutest place on the inside when the world is opened up again. I think that you should definitely check it out. I feel like it has like the best vibes for happiness and just like, I don't know, some places are just so beautiful and it lines up with so, Okay, look at the background too, like isn't that shit so cute? This is like a movie set place. All right, let's try. Hold on, this one is getting strong, oh my god. I said, what's better? The cookie or the chocolate loaf cake? And the guy said, more people order the chocolate loaf cake. So, let's see if more people are right. Shit. This is Wilma Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with the acclaimed creator, artist, she does it all, the one and only Asidia Huang. Hello, Asidia, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Asidia, you're my neighbor here in New York City. We just found out off camera. And I wanna know first and foremost, Asidia, where did you grow up? And when did you realize that you loved the arts? I actually grew up in Chicago and I came to New York during the pandemic. I found out that I love the arts when I was always like hustling and trying to be successful, but I always wanted to do something that I really loved. And for me, that was always like creating content beyond camera, whether that's like live streaming, creating videos, or just having fun with people and showing it to them. Well, you have so many followers, both on YouTube and TikTok, especially. Obviously, we had time, all of us, to create during this these past horrible 18 months. But I'm curious, you seem like such an optimistic person. I'm curious, how did you keep your optimism up? And also, when did you decide during the pandemic that you were like, you know what, F it. I'm just going to start creating more video content. Honestly? Um, I'm not as optimistic as people think. I was like, I think I cried like two times yesterday, but it's okay because I feel <laughs> because I I feel like it gets really hard. And then I think the all the hard and stuck in life like really motivates you to just be better. But I decided I want to create content because I was pretty much doing nothing with my life. And I was like, let me actually try anything at all because I can't keep wasting my life away. And I feel like there's always like some big purpose that everyone thinks they're supposed to be doing or something higher. But in all honesty, I just do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and trust that eventually we'll find it. That is so amazing for someone so young. That's why I had to take a pause. I'm like, oh my God, I wish I knew that, you know, when I was your age. But what's so beautiful, Asidia, is the fact that you already know at such a young age about this whole thing called, it's the journey, not the destination. And the fact that you live by that is beautiful. I'm curious, Asidia, do you have anything that you're working on currently that isn't out yet that you're excited to maybe give us a little sneak peek about? I honestly, I don't have anything extremely special. Or what about ideas? Do you have any ideas that you've been that you've been like thinking about doing and you're like, I'm not ready to pull, I'm not ready to, you know, pull the trigger on that. But I 
You know what? I know what I should have done, Asidia? I should have listened to what you just told me, which was you take it day by day. And yeah, I, whatever the universe provides, you're just gonna go down that path and into that flow. I think um, like a lot of people who are probably in the artist industry, either they're doing acting or modeling or something. I think that a lot of times they they remember that we have to focus on like making sure that we cover our expenses and that we can still have like the financial security. So I feel like I've taken a lot of focus away from creating for a while. And I focus a lot on like working as much as I can and like applying the opportunities. And I feel like there's a lot of ideas, but for me, the, the next step, I guess, is just that financial security so I could focus all in on creating content, trying to book acting modeling gigs and stuff like that. I hear you. And look, this is what I love about Phoenix. So it's not only going to be, and it not only already is, a one-stop shop for artists to have all of their social media links in one place for someone so it's easily digestible for people who want to research you. But also what I'm so excited about for you particularly is the whole notion that you're going to be able to live stream on Phoenix. You're going to be able to do specialized content on Phoenix and then share it with your friends through the shareable app link. And when with the shareable app link that you're going to be able to share with your family, friends, and fans, you will literally get to give people your personal app that will go on their home screen, on their tablet. And so I'm wondering, Asidia, when you look ahead at this whole notion of a world that likes to that likes things easily digestible in like these like short form videos. I'm curious, like doing like TikTok, for example, like what that was like for you. I mean, were you always on TikTok before the pandemic? Did you just start doing it during or what? Yeah, honestly, I started doing TikTok and I made, I did a couple of dancing videos, but that completely tanked and <laughs> it was really sad, but I got, I got over it. And then I wanted to do some food videos and I actually got hired by someone, but then they sent me back a message and they were like, yeah, actually this isn't good enough, but thank you so much for your time. And I was like, understood, you know, because it, it happens to all of us. So I um, I just recently got, I got a gig where I get to film around New York fun touristy things for someone who has self-guided tours in New York. And I think it's fun because like, yeah, the content is hard because everyone's like, oh yeah, you just create content. You're gonna make like so much money every month. But it doesn't happen like that for most people and we have to keep going and pushing through but eventually like if we stick to what we're doing i feel like all that hurt and all that pain just motivates us to like learn how to get better to push our skills and try something new oh my god you're so inspirational like i need you to do a ted talk and i'm so excited too that the audience got a little sneak peek of your amazing talent you're doing a guided tour through new york um what was it the five dollars remind the audience what they just saw yeah so I did $5 vegan eats in New York, Chicago, and Boston. Oh my God. Like you are, this is what I think about you. I think you're like a future mogul. You remind me a lot of a woman who I like love since I saw her actually on the Real Housewives of New York. Do you know who Bethany Frankel is by chance? No, she, but I'm Beth, if you look her up, she's, she's a mogul. She created skinny girl margarita literally while she was on a reality show. Oh. And now like, she sold it for like a hundred million and has like all these different brands and podcasts and networks and books. I feel like, cause for Bethany, it was that skinny girl margarita. She used to, have to do baking, she used to be a chef. But that was the thing that like launched her. I feel like it's gonna take one thing for everything that you're putting. I feel like you're throwing everything that you're good at onto the wall. It's gonna be that one thing for you where it's gonna be like, bam. And then it's like, people I've been here forever. Like, do you know what I mean? But I don't know, I just feel that with you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Don't cry, are you crying? <laughs> no, it's just my face, but <laughs> I'm allowed to ask you questions. <laughs> cause I always look like I'm crying too, but anyway, but, cause I usually am. What do you wanna ask? I was gonna ask you what actually gave you the idea to start up like Phoenix and like just provide a whole entire different service than anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look at, I wish I could take credit for it, but I did not. It was two of my friends whom I met just eight months ago, Alan and Lance, and their North Star was always to create a collective, a collective in a safe space for artists to not only share their contact with one another, but with fans, friends, and family all over the world. And on top of that, finally make a living doing what they love. I mean, you know, you look at, I dare I say, sorry, I'm gonna name it, but the Spotify's of the world where artists are barely able to make 
what, 0. 0.0005 of a cent per stream. With Phoenix and the way that they've run their ad revenue service and the way that as a collective with artists sharing their app, it gives the artists the opportunity to finally put into their hands their revenue stream and tapping into the cryptocurrency world, which I'm still getting well-versed in cryptocurrency. You've heard of Bitcoin, right? So, well, Phoenix is dipping into the whole cryptocurrency world where cryptocurrency is essentially taking out the middleman, the bank. And um, I mean, I can go on and on about it off camera with you and we will. But to, to your question, the North Star for these gentlemen and their entire team at Phoenix and why I am involved is because they are genuinely for the artists and they are genuinely said enough is enough that an artist doesn't have an, the ability to make a living and they should. And the team that, around Phoenix is the best in the technology world and being someone who was never well-versed in technology, I'm now more well-versed than I ever thought I would be. But my biggest joy has been speaking with artists like you around the world who are so hungry to connect and so hungry to create. And Phoenix is now a platform, unlike any other, where they can actually be in control of their art and being compensated for it. I don't think I took a breath there. I feel like I had to take a bit. <laughs> I literally, I literally, after I said that, the CD, I was like, ooh, I, I feel like I just went for a run. Anyway, question for you, final question for you. And actually, before I do that, I want to let everyone know for more on the amazing Asidia, you can read more about it right below this video. Asidia, what are you most looking forward to as the world opens up a little bit more as an artist, as a human? I think the the change in opportunities i feel like wherever you go there's a lot of opportunities and a lot i don't think that most of them have been gone i think they just changed and i think people had to get more creative but it makes me really happy to hear like i i met someone who was a singer on chips and then it all shut down during covid he he had to worry about like everything in normal life but he's back doing what he loved i'm happy that people are going to go out to concerts people are going to connect and artists can get like the credit that they deserve i think people are always like oh is work or play more important but i think play is such an important part of life and artists contribute to it a lot and i'm glad that people get to like enjoy artists in real life but also through live streaming and also finally back in the real world again you're amazing. I'm so grateful that we're connected now and I'm so grateful and happy that you're a part of Phoenix and I'm, I can't wait to watch your star continue to rise in CDF. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for this. I appreciate it.